Hi, I'm Peter Burris, and welcome to another The Cube conversation from beautiful Palo Alto. Here today, we were with Mudu Sudharkar, who's a CEO investor and a longtime friend of The Cube. Mudu, welcome to The Cube. Thank you, Peter. Thanks for having me. So one of the things we're going to talk about, there's a lot of things we could talk about. I mean, you've been around, you've invested in a number of companies, you've got a great pedigree, great track record. Thank you. Uh, ServiceNow and some other companies. I'll let you talk a little bit more about that. But one of the things we want to talk about is some of the big changes that are happening in the way that IT gets delivered within enterprises. The whole notion of IT operations management is on the forefront of everybody's mind. We've been talking about DevOps for a long time. It hasn't been universally adopted. It clearly needs some help. It's working really well in some places, not so well in other places. We're trying to bring that cloud operating model into the enterprise. What are some of the things, that, based on your experience, talk a little bit about yourself and, and then use that as a lever into what are some of the things that the IT organization, business overall has to think about as they think about modernizing IT operations management or ITOM? Great topic. It's a very lengthy, we can go on for hours on this, right? Uh, as we were talking earlier, Peter, so I think IT operations management has been around for what, 20, 30 years? It started with, I guess, at the time of mainframes to client server, but as you rightfully said, we are in the age of cloud. How does cloud, AI, machine learning, and the SaaS services going to impact ITOM, or IT operations management? I think that's, it's going to evolve. The question is, how do you going to evolve? And the one area that you are always passionate about talking about the cloud infrastructure itself, and the word that you use is called plastic infrastructure. The underlying infrastructure is changing so much. We are moving from virtual machines to, uh, to serverless architectures to containers. So this whole serverless architecture presents such a new concept the ITOM as itself should evolve to something new. I actually, I mean, there's the an industry word for this called AI operations. AI is just one piece, but how do you take hybrid cloud? How do you take the actual cloud substrate and evolve IT operation management is such a big topic on multiple areas and how it's going to change industry. So let's break it down a little bit. So you mentioned the term plastic infrastructure. We've written a bunch about this here at Wikibon. The basic notion of plastic infrastructure is that we can look at three generations of infrastructure, what we call static infrastructure, which might be brick. You add load to it, mm -hmm. it might fall apart, but it was bound into the application. And then the world of, or the, the era of elastic infrastructure was really where the cloud started, and the idea that you didn't, no longer had to purchase to your peak, that the uh, elastic infrastructure would allow you to peak up and peak down, but it would snap back into place. It was almost like a rubber brick. Right. But this notion of plastic infrastructure is how do we add new workloads faster? How do we uh, do, so, but do so in a way that, the, that we don't have to manually go in and adjust the infrastructure, that the infrastructure just responds to the new workloads in a plastic way and snaps into a new form. Now, to, we are going to need to be able to do that right. if we're going to add AI and we're going to add you know, ML, machine learning, and all these other new application-oriented technologies to this. Can't imagine how we're going to add all that complexity at the application level if we don't dramatically automate and simplify the operating level. Right. That's the basis of plastic infrastructure. What do you think? No, I completely agree. I mean, I think you kind of touched all the good points, but the areas that I can add on top of what you mentioned is if you look at the plastic infrastructure, the one area is so far IT operation management is built around a human being, around a DevOps, and around an IT admin. In the new world, it will be 90 to 80 percent will be done automated manner. Your trading is algorithmic. You're, we are in a self-driving car age, but yet IT operation management is around a IT admin or a DevOps. That got to change. I think the cloud guys, the Amazon, Azure, Google, they're going to disrupt this because they have to do this in an automated manner, right? So that means the plastic infrastructure should be able to run workloads, it should be malleable, it's like the, it should be change its shape and form, and it should be, that's where the serverless really comes in. I don't want to pick a, a compute and rent it for so many hours. That's still yesterday concept. I think this whole virtualization and virtual machines is gone to the point of serverless. So all these things, how do you manage the workloads? How do you manage your apps? To your point, apps have to be mapped downstream. I call it a ser uh, service maps. How do you build this dynamic service maps for your application? How do I know which component is failing at what point in time? Uh, right, asking what I call the root cause analysis. Do you expect a human being to identify that MongoDB or a SQL server is down because of this hardware issue? That has to be detected in an automatic manner, right? At least a root cause and triage it to the point a human being can come, come and say, I agree or don't agree, are able to take. Then the final thing is, the infrastructure has to be, a, um, should be take actions, allow it to be the point where the under, once you detect a problem, the infrastructure should be able to say algorithmically, programmatically through an API, I should be able to impact the change. The problem and change in infrastructure today is very much driven through scripts and through admins. Can I do that in a programmatic manner? It hasn't happened yet. 
Again. And, it, and it should be, I mean, uh, when you stop and think about it, uh, AI, uh, for example, using using AI as a general umbrella for a lot of different technologies that are based on you know pattern recognition and uh, and, and and anomaly detection right. and all the other stuff that's associated with AI, but we have pretty good data sources in the infrastructure. We know how these mm -hmm. tools operate. They are programmable, so they get you know a range of particular behaviors. But there are discernible patterns associated with those behaviors. So you think that infrastructure itself would be a great source to start to building out some of these AI platforms, some of these new modeled, uh, what we call data first types of applications. What do you think? Absolutely, you nailed it. I think if you remember uh, my previous company, Caspida, which was acquired by Splunk, we did that for security. We created this whole area called user behavioral analytics, right, for security. Understand the behavior of the users, understand the behavior of the attackers, external insider. Same thing needs to happen. But all IT. represented through a device through that a had device. known characteristics. Right. So we weren't saying, we weren't making big, claim, big claims necessarily about people, right. which have you know unbelievably complex, but when you start with what is a person doing with a device, that set of behaviors is now constrained, which makes it a great source. Absolutely, so I think like, given the sources in IT operations area, if you are think about, uh, uh, for example, looking at the patterns and the behavior of the application, the storage, I call it like a, think of like the four layers. You have apps, you have compute, you have network, and storage. There are different patterns and behavior you can do it. You can do anomalies, then you can understand the various workflow of the patterns, but I call it the three piece problem with AI machine learning. The three piece are, uh, you actually said it five piece, I'll come to, the three piece that I usually talk about is the proactive, the predictive, and prescriptive nature. If I can take these data sources, whether they come from logs, events, alerts, and able to do those, this for those, I can do planning, I can be able to implement what changes I can do as a workflow and full actions. Because detecting is no good if I can't take an action. That's where the prescriptiveness comes in. And I think that whole area of IT operation management, what used to happen is a mundane with a human being will be automated. And then the question comes in is, do you do this in batch mode or real time? And right. you want to do it in real time. But look, let, me, let me get those straight. So the three Ps that you mentioned were proactive, Prescriptive and predictive. And predictive. Yes. So that's a proactive, probably proactive, predictive, and then prescriptive. And, and just you know, to, to level it out, I, I noted, noted that all this is based on patterns yes. that come out of some of these infrastructure technologies. So as we think about where ITOM is going, you mentioned earlier AI uh, systems management, AI services management. When we think about kind of some of the next steps, who do you anticipate are going to be? kind of at the leading, or leading the charge as we move forward here? I, I think um, I think there'll be new sheriff in town. My, not, may not be, to your point earlier, there'll be many sheriffs in town in this area. The great opportunity here is, whenever there's a fundamental change like this happen, there'll be new players will win this market. Definitely the cloud guys have the right substrate. The Amazons, the Azures, and the Googles of the world, they have the right infrastructure. They're all moving towards the plastic infrastructure. They just have to do more on workload management. They need to do more on the AI operations. Well, they have a absolutely sense of urgency and pressing they need. Have, Their business falls down if they, they can't do exactly. this. So I think those guys will definitely there. Then all the startups, right? I think there are a whole bunch of startups, each of them will be doing from a small niche player all the way to a platform players. It's a great opportunity, it's a greenfield opportunity. It's going to open up a whole wonderful new players will come in. Who will be them, the next generation's AI operations vendors? So I'm going to ask you two questions then. Uh, one, do you think the big boys, the HPEs, the Oracles, the Cisco's, the IBM's are going to be able to change their stripes well enough so that they can do both? We're trying to keep our install base and upgrade and enhance it and try to introduce this new cloud operating model, and we'll talk about the startups in a second. What do you think? Are the big boys going to be able to make this transition? I, I think they have to. Their hand is already dealt. I call it cloud is a runaway train. Cloud today is 30, 40 billion dollars. If you are those mega vendors, you don't, if you're not making on this, something is wrong with you, right? I mean, in this day and age, if you're not making money on the cloud with this, what we are talking about is, so what they have to do is, how can they, either they have to offer a cloud services, public cloud or private. If you're not doing that, might as well get into this game of AI ops so that you are actually making money on the apps and on the infrastructure. So all those big large vendors that you mentioned about the Cisco's of the world, the Oracle's of the world, they have a, a genuine interest to make this happen. Got it, so in many respects, to kind of summarize that point, it's like, look, the cloud experience is being defined elsewhere. It's being defined right. by Azure, AWS, uh, Google, GCP, uh, and these vendors are going to have to articulate very, very clearly for their customer base the role that they're going to play, and that could include bringing the cloud experience 
on premise when and if data is required on premise. Absolutely, and I actually call these clouds to be the aircraft carriers, right? You will, as a world, when it settles, eventually it won't have 100 aircraft carriers. You will have these three or four large cloud vendors. On top of them, the people who manage apps and services will be few. You don't need 20 vendors managing your infrastructure. So there'll be a huge consolidation game. The question is, when it, that happens, the winners doesn't have to be the legacy vendors. Right. The history shows the legacy always loses out, so that's where the startups have an opportunity. All right, so let's talk about the startups. Are there any particular class of startups out there? Or is this going to, are some of the security guys through managed services going to be able to do a better job because they can make claims about your data? Or is you know, some of the guys, some of the companies coming from middleware? Where do you think the startup kind of epicenter is going to be as we see new companies introduced into the no, space? I, that's a good question. I think I don't have any one particular vendor in mind, but I think the, definitely the vendors that will come into play will be people who can do log management better. We already know. I mean, I splunks of the world. People who can do events and alerts management. People who can do incident problem change management. Right, all those things, if you look at the whole area, and people who can do the whole application management, as later you talk about the workload management. So I think each of these functions, there'll be winners coming in. Eventually all of them will be offered by one single person as a full stack solution for the cloud, on the cloud. The key problem that I keep noticing is, most vendors are keep still tied to the old infrastructure which is mainframe or physical servers. Nobody's building this thing for the cloud, in the cloud again. So the, somebody who has the right substrate to build this as a playbook will end up winning this game. Yeah, that's a, it's going to be an interesting period of time. Now when we stop and think about, uh, I made an assertion earlier that for us to build more complex applications, which is where everybody's talking about, it's essential, in our opinion, that we find ways to simplify and bring more automation to the infrastructure. If we think about servers, storage, network, uh, those types of things, is there a particular part of the infrastructure that you think is going to receive treatment earlier and therefore is going to kind of lead the way for how the rest of the stuff? Is storage going to show CPU and network or is network going to step up because of some of the changes that are happening? What do you think? It's a very good question. Um, I think, look, I think the key pain points for most people today, if you look at the way the complex questions are, if there's a problem in the network infrastructure, it's very hard to triage that. So that area has to be automated. I mean, you can't expect a human being to understand why my switcher network is not right. performing it. It's just while, happening too Like fast. why Wi-Fi is not working in sixth floor and seventh floor. It's a very, so network will be one area, it's highly visible. Second will be in the database and storage area. Just because my storage disk is full, I don't want my database to be down. It's a, such a known pattern behavior, people will catch those things in an automated manner. Right, so storage network will be called. Where you see the higher order items is, when an application is not performing well, is it a performance problem, or why this component is tied to what component, right? If this application is built on a load balancer, and a load balancer is talking to, and the database. Building that map of who is connected to who, that's a new graph algorithms, graph mm. theory you need. That doesn't exist today. So I think what will happen is, how do you manage an application given a problem? and mapping that, that is I think the, the number one that will start happening first. Everything else people will happen over a period of time, but the apps that are visible, where a user and a customer can see the impact, will happen first. Yeah, actually we have a prediction here at Wikibon, what we call networks of data, yeah. where the idea that we're going to, the next round of network formation is going to be data assets explicitly connected. connecting with each other and then using that as a way of zoning data assets right. and saying this application requires data from these places and then all the technology that allows you to either move it in or to right. keep pointers or whatever else it might be. So this notion, you would agree then that, that absolutely you know, a graph of data is right. going to drive a lot of the change and, forward. And if you actually take it to that, I actually talk about saying that it doesn't require a single class of algorithm. I call it an ensemble of machine learning algorithms you need. You need some statistical, some probabilistic, some Markovian algorithm, some Bayesian, and mainly graph algorithms. This data has to capture the behaviors and patterns that you want to put in a larger graph that you should be able to mine on. That doesn't exist today. So everybody's most often when they talk about ML, they're talking about like dynamic thresholding, statistical, uh, that's all is there in IT operation management. The next level of how do you build a graph, like too big to fail, or if my opinion fails, what is it relying on? Like if I come to Peter's house, how is your house looks like? Do you have a one bedroom, one, you have two kitchens, you know what I'm saying? It looks well, like a network of data right exactly now. Exactly right there. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so I got one more question for you, Mudu. Uh, and that is, uh, you, 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 you're, you work with us a lot in some of the crowd chats Thank we do, you're you know, you. a great research partner for us. Um, as you think about kind of the story that needs to be told to the CXO about some of these changes, how is it different from the story that needs to be told to the, the IT leader? Uh, I, I can imagine what some of the differences are, but you're talking to both sides. 
What what would you, what would your advice and counsel be to companies that are trying to talk to the CEO about this or the board? What do you think? Yeah, what should I think, be saying to them? No, I think you, you kind of did that yesterday in the crowd chat. I think the key thing that the CIO or a CXO or a CEO needs to have this is, we used to call the chief data officer, where the data is a key. That element was applied for the overall business. That same role needs to happen within the CIO now. How do I use my data to make my IT better? So that maybe call it a CIO, a CDO for the CIO is a big role that needs to happen. But the goal of that person and that entity should be is, how can I do can I run my operation in a light sort manner? I call it IT as a service. People talk about IT and service, but IT as a service to me is a bigger concept. Right? Let me make sure I got this, So, because this is a crucially important point. So in many respects, this, we should be saying to the CEO, uh, your data is an asset. You have to take steps to appreciate dramatically and rapidly appreciate the value of data as an asset, and that requires looking at the CIO with the CDO data officer and yes. saying, your job is to, independent of any particular technology or any particular set of ITOM processes, your job is to dramatically accelerate how fast we're able to generate data, uh, value out of our data, utilizing these technology investments. Absolutely. Because that person, once you have the data as a decision, what will happen is, you'll still use the existing process, but it gives you the new insights. What can I automate? What can I do more with less people, right? That has to happen, like if I'm a CEO, you should wake up and say, 90% of my things should be able to automate today. Right. Okay, so let's talk about, last question. You've been, uh, you've led a lot of organizations through a lot of change. Uh, we're talking about a lot of change within the IT organization when we talk about these things. What's one bit of advice that you have for that CIO or leader of, of IT and help them take their people through the types of changes that we're talking about? Make bets. Don't be afraid of making bets. Unless you make a bet, you're never going to win. So every year, every quarter, make a new bet. Some bets you're going to fail, some you're going to succeed. Unless you make a bet, you will not innovate. And understand the portfolio and, and sustain those bets. Right. And then when, you, when you've lost, don't keep putting money on Exactly, yeah, keep moving on. Great. All right, so, uh, Mudu, thank you very much for being here. In the Peter, with us. always a pleasure to talk All to you, right. sir. All right, uh, Mudu Sudakar, uh, investor, CEO. Once again, this has been a CUBE conversation. Thanks you very much for being here. Thank you, And Peter. we'll talk to you soon. Thank you always, and John too.